Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are checking out the Neheme NH760. Now it is a foldable Wi-Fi FPV, 1080p photos and 720p videos, altitude hold, 90 degree tilt adjustable camera, beginner RC quadcopter ready to fly. Now it weighs in at a cool 195 grams with the battery inserted so no registration is required and no remote ID is required as well. So taking a closer look, we have staggered fold out arms and we have the landing legs in the front and we got the landing pads in the rear arms and we got a couple of landing pads on the rear of the body as well and it will stick that landing very well now we have what looks like an optical flow sensor uh, camera but it is just a little plastic cover on there we have status led lights on each of the motor pods there's a led light in the front led light in the rear and what looks like placeholders for prop guys but this unit did not come with any prop guards. We have floppy dual bladed props which are geared and powered via brushed motors. We have the power push button on and off switch on top of the canopy and we have a 90 degree manually tilt adjustable Wi-Fi FPV camera up in the front. It goes all the way down the 90 degrees and it goes up slightly higher than zero degrees. It will take and record 1080p photos and 720p videos to the phone app and thus into the camera roll of your device. And although it looks like there is a built-in DVR with a SD card marking and all, but unfortunately there is no hardware internally on this model. Now the battery bay is in the rear of the quadcopter and the battery is a 3.7 volt 1800 milliamp size battery good for about 15 minutes of flight time now they do provide you with two of these batteries so a total flight time of 30 minutes can be had between the two batteries now there is a lock tab in the rear of the battery let me lift it up you see that little tab going down and going up now this little tab on the battery prevents the battery from sliding all the way in so you can insert a battery and keep it here without having the drone turn on by an accidental pressing of the power button and after you unlock the battery and insert the battery all the way in you can lock the battery in so it doesn't accidentally slide out Charge up the battery via the micro USB port using the provided charge cable. Now the USB dongle will light up with a red LED light while charging and turn off when fully charged. Now I used a normal micro USB charge cable since they only provide you with one of these charge cables to charge the second battery but that is not recommended since you really don't know when the battery is fully charged and the battery itself does not have the mechanism to turn off the charge which can lead to an overcharged battery which can easily damage the battery the remote controller has a flip out spring-loaded phone holder and there are no visible external antennas the antenna is probably embedded inside of the remote controller we have the speed changing button on the left shoulder speeds one two and three can be had and we have a flip button on the right shoulder in the front we have the four-way trim buttons one key to take off and one key to land button and the emergency stop button on the other side we have the power push button on and off switch and a red led indicator light for power we have the camera or the photo button and we have the video button Headless mode button here and the one key to return. Now this is not a return to home button. It is just a directional return button. So both sticks at the bottom and in will arm and disarm the motors of the quadcopter and both sticks at the bottom and out 
will calibrate the gyros of the quadcopter. The remote controller will require three AA size batteries. All right, so here we go. Test flight of the Neheme NH760, the tracker drone. I got a fresh battery, fully charged, inserted, and locked into place. So we are ready to go. So go ahead and power up the quadcopter. The LED lights will flash. Power up the remote control and up and down on the throttle will complete the binding process and you can see that there's a green solid LED in the front and red solid LED in the rear okay so what you want to do is this is just a Wi-Fi FPV quadcopter and it is not a GPS quadcopter so there is no compass calibration but you do have to calibrate the gyro so it flies nice and level so both sticks at the bottom and out We'll calibrate the gyros of this quadcopter. There you go. Beep is heard, lights flash, and then they go solid again. That means gyro calibration has been completed. Now, this is a Wi Fi FPV quadcopter, so let's go into the phone app. Whoo! Super bright. And go into the Wi Fi section of your phone or device and connect to the Neheme NH760 Wi-Fi network. I'm already connected and here is the app. It is called the Neheme Tracker app. Free downloadable app in the App Store so go ahead and check it out. Let me go ahead and enter and where is my accessibility here. Screen record. Three, two, one, boom. All right, screen is recording, and let me double check to see if it is still recording. Yes, it is. So I'll press start, and it'll take me into the Wi-Fi FPV interface, and there you go. It looks like a basic looking phone app, and the field of view looks to be pretty decent. It doesn't look to be too narrow or too wide it doesn't have a real fish eye view let's go ahead and check it out here take a photo using the hard remote here let's see okay the page flipped over so you can take a photo with the hard remote And finally, photo of the table. I forgot to put my landing pad. I'll put that in a minute. Let's see here. There's photo and video icons on the app as well. So let's see if I can take a photo with the phone app. And the page goes up. So yes, I can take a photo with the phone app. And let's see, kind of hard to do with holding the quadcopter here. Got to do it with my left hand. And there you go, another photo has been taken. And let me go ahead and see if the record works. Double beeps. And I see on the app that the video icon has turned yellow and a counter is right below it. So we are taking a video. So let me go ahead and place my iPad on the table here and we'll come back to it in a little bit. And also I got my landing pad here so we can land on the landing pad and not in the dirt all right so we are good to go video is recording screen is recording so both sticks at the bottom and in hello we'll arm the motors there you go arm the motors and do that again we'll disarm the motors now let's see if the one key to take off and land works by itself oh yeah <laughs> immediately Okay, so it is drifting and the reason why is because it does not have GPS and it does not have an optical flow sensor. So I'm bringing it back and what a beautiful day it is. Look at that. It is just hovering in one spot and there's not much breeze. So this is the breeze that's taking it over there. Well, if you want to maintain a steady position, you can use the trim buttons here since it's drifting that way you can trim it to the right and trim it backwards 
Maybe too much to the right. Okay. Okay, that's the middle when the long beeps are heard. So look at that. Nice. Let's see if it yaws in place. It's not bad. It drifts along with a tiny bit of breeze that we have here today. And it is coming this way. Let's see what speed we are in. By default, this should start off in speed number one. Okay. Yeah, it was in speed number one. And here we go. Full yaw, full pitch, speed number one. Nice and gentle, good for a beginner. And full pitch only for speed. And there you go, that's the speed of speed number one. And let's see, coming this way as well. And there you go. So let's go on to speed number two. And there you go, full pitch. Got a little speedier. Turning around, coming this way, full pitch. Okay, pretty good. Now, full y'all, full pitch. It almost spins in one spot. Not bad, not bad. Okay, now speed number three. Oh yeah, it got a lot quicker. And it has a little bump when I y'all. To change position okay so full pitch maximum speed speed number three yeah not bad there you go all right now full y'all full pitch let me bring it in closer first yeah, it has a little bump when I turn around okay there you go full y'all full pitch almost spins on one axis but it drifts off a little bit all right, not bad. Pretty good. Okay, let me check out the one key to land. See if that works. Okay, pressing the one key to land. And it starts to come down so you can redirect the quadcopter to where you want to land. And there you go. And the motor shut off. Very nice. I don't have to place it in the middle. It's not a GPS quadcopter. So now I'm going to just manually arm and manually take off and we are still in speed number three so whenever you are in trouble and you need to cut the motors off immediately like you're tangled up in some branches and the motors are still spinning and some of the motors have stopped spinning that way you need to turn off the power to the motors right away you don't want the motors to burn out so I'm just going to demonstrate that. I'm just going to leave it right around here and hit that emergency stop button. There you go. It kind of drifted off, but you get the idea. You just tap on the emergency stop button and all the motors will shut off immediately. So you do that in an emergency. There you go. Emergency stop button. Okay. Arming, arming it and taking off once again. And now let's check out one key to return. So our heading should be that way because we calibrated it that way. So let's see if it still remembers the direction. So one key to return. It's a directional return. It should come back this way. 
and there you go so exit otherwise it'll just keep going exit again and hit that button it will exit and let's see if we change directions it will exit the one key to return like some of the other quad cups do okay return it is not a return to home guys it is just a one key return hello okay now it's activated and let's see if I redirect it it will exit the one key return hey not bad so far it's a nice little Wi-Fi FPV flyer guys and guess what <laughs> this thing also has a flip button remember these Press that button and direct whichever direction you want the quad cup to, to flip forward. Oh, it doesn't do a forward flip. Let's see if it does a back flip. Okay, it does a back flip. Let's see, let's try that forward flip once again. Oh, it does it. It does it. I have to wait a little while before I direct it. And there you go, a left flip. So all directional flips can be had with this quadcopter. Nice! <laughs> yeah, it has been a while since I flew a quadcopter that can do flips with the push of a button. Not bad. Alright, so let's see if the headless mode button works. Headless mode works. Okay, continuous beeping. I'm pulling it and I'm pushing it. And it is calibrated this manner so when I push it it goes forward when I pull it it comes backwards left and right now headless mode should work with the quadcopter facing whatever direction so I'm gonna put the quadcopter in a spin and push it forward and look at that while it's in a spin it is still coming back and it is going forward awesome huh to the left and to the right I don't know how the heck it does that. It maintains its path while it's spinning. So I don't know which way the quadcopter is facing. I lost orientation. I'll just pull it back and direct it towards myself. So it's a very good feature to have when you lose orientation. So let's get out. And there you go. Not bad. It's a little wobbly. There's no image stabilization or a gimbal so the video is not going to look smooth it's just going to be choppy this is a entry-level beginner rc quadcopter just wi-fi fpv so you can lose this quadcopter if you don't be careful so if you are a beginner try to go in a field that if some kind of mishap happens you can go and retrieve it like this field here huge there's no way I'm gonna lose a clock up to here I can go and retrieve it don't fly near homes don't fly near trees you get tangled up in trees and that is not a good thing you know all right let's see if we can do some FPV I'm gonna bring it down in altitude just a little bit and it's slow to come down in altitude and leave it right about there and let me go and see if we still got Wi-Fi FPV How's the connection? Okay. Okay, I'm pushing it. Okay, we still got connection. And it is in a spin. Okay, I'm going away from myself. And I overspun. Look at that. Look at the control. Not that good. Okay, I'm coming towards myself. But it is digging to the ground so much that I cannot see myself. I'm going to raise it up in altitude. And then forward pitch. And there you go. I can see myself. I want to turn around right here. And go away from myself once again. There it goes. Turn around. And come towards myself once again. Yep. It does have some breakups. But it does pretty good. So maybe if you want to do some FPV you might want to go down in speed speed number one so the camera doesn't pitch too much to the ground so you can 
gradually see where you're going and you can gradually control your quadcopter like this. So there you go. Quadcopter is going away from me. And I'm going to turn around. So you can see where you're going. And there you go. I'm kind of coming towards myself here. It kind of lost connection. And it doesn't know where it is. Here, I'm going to raise my remote control above my arms. And there you go. I can bring it back. So it doesn't have great distance. Maybe about a hundred meter distance or so. So let's check out the distance. So here you go. Pushing it out. Can I still yaw? Okay, right about there, I'm losing connection. It's yawing, but I didn't put that input, and it does not want to stop. So, let me go ahead and see if I can bring it in. Which direction is it going? Nope, it's going away from me. So, this is the time to hit the headless mode and pull it back towards yourself. If you calibrated this thing correctly, it should head back towards you. I'm pulling it, and looks like it's getting bigger. Let me raise it up in altitude a little bit and just pull, keep pulling it. Keep pulling it. So there you go. That is how you bring your quadcopter back when you lose orientation. Use the headless mode. Make sure you got the heading set correctly when you calibrated the gyros. Front, back, left, and right. So there you go. It's coming back. Kind of slow, but it's coming back because it's in speed number one speed number two so it's a little faster and here it is so turn that headless mode off and now you got full control of the quadcopter once again so don't go beyond the hundred meters I would say or about 70 80 meters should be your cap and fly within that radius so you have a diameter of about 140 150 meters with you standing in the middle of it all right okay so far so good nice little beginner quadcopter and it's got altitude hold so and most quadcopters now have health altitude hold so when you let go it's not going to come down and this is holding altitude so it gives you the ability to practice your thick stick so you can get that muscle memory embedded into your thumb and your brain go back and forth if you are a beginner and look at the quadcopter from behind so when you push it forward it's going forward when you pull it back it's coming back and left and right and then once you get kind of used to it you can turn it to the left and go forward it's going to go to the, towards the left and when you go left it's going to come towards you sort of you know so practice all that kind of stuff and make it face you and go forward it'll come towards you and when you pull it it'll go away from you so you can get that orientation and once you got that you just start doing some figure eights you direct it in one direction and you turn around and you come back in the opposite direction fly for a little bit and you turn around and go the opposite direction and once again so you're making like an infinity symbol in the air and that is very important to allow you to learn orientation of the quadcopter so you can fly it any way you want after that so once you got that done you should be pretty much good to go then you can jump into doing stuff like flips you know don't be f doing flips inside the house uh, go outside where it's nice and you know big you got a big field maybe in your backyard or something you know if you got a big backyard do it outside so you don't damage the clock up there and hit something like the ceiling or you know your light fixture anything like that <laughs> Believe me, I've gone through all that stuff long time ago. Yeah, but now 
you know, I just fly outdoors. I never fly indoors anymore. It's just not a good idea to fly indoors. You know, there's nothing you can learn from flying indoors. Just take it outside and fly it. That way, you're probably never going to break the quadcopter. I mean, most of the time, you break the quadcopter because you're flying inside of the house and you're damaging the props and in turn you're damaging the motors and then your quad cutter is no good it is starting to drift in favor of one side where it's kind of hurt or the motor is kind of damaged so you don't want to do that so to keep your quad cutter flying nice and healthy bring it in once the uh, LVC lights start to flash and I'm thinking it's going to start flashing pretty soon clock up is looking pretty good now this does not have a return home low voltage return home so you got to keep an eye on the lights and that will indicate low voltage and you should bring it in when the clock up is telling you it is in low voltage and looks like it is in low voltage right now all right so I'm going to continue flying because this is a test and you shouldn't be doing this with your quadcopter because once you are in LVC the quadcopter will not do special features like flips see no more flips because it's trying to save battery when that happens you should bring it in and land it and look at that now it's starting to land by itself so you don't want to have the quadcopter do all this and go to this extreme and make sure emergency stop some of the motors stop but some of the motors are still spinning so you don't want to have it do that you can burn out some of the motors so hit that emergency stop button all right guys so there you have it the Neheme NH760 the tracker first battery all right guys I got the second battery inserted I did the gyro calibration and everything I turned on all my recording so as you can see I can arm the motors and it will take off arm it and I can take off and I'm controlling the clock out there with the uh, hard remote controller here and one key to land there you go just like that I still got the Wi-Fi FPV connected so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the phone app to control the quadcopter. So I'm going to turn off my remote controller. There you go. Turned it off. And I got the iPad. And I've just turned on the virtual sticks here. So let's see if it works. Flying the quadcopter with the phone app. So one key to take off. Look at that. I'm flying the quadcopter with the virtual sticks. With the Wi-Fi phone app. Let me go up in altitude. There you go. Hey, pretty good. Let's see if I can fly this thing. With the phone app. Solo. Okay, we are in speed number one. That's 30%. There's speed number two. And I guess I'll stay in speed number two. I can still see the sky a little bit. Speed number three. That'll kind of go too fast. So speed number two is good. And I'll turn around. Oh, it's in a spin, guys. So just a little bit too far away already. Look at that. This thing could benefit from a, a Wi-Fi repeater, like a Xiaomi Mi Wi-Fi repeater. Look at that. But you can fly this thing with your phone or your device with the Wi-Fi phone app. And I got pretty good controls. It responds pretty good if you don't go too far away there you go okay come to a halt but it overshoots it a little bit so let me lower down oops go forward let me lower down the altitude just a little bit here to a manageable height right there is good maybe a little bit more lower that's good all right, so let's go and check out some of these uh, special features on the app, like gyro mode. Okay, gyro mode is on. You can fly the quadcopter with the tilting action of your phone or device. Look at that. 
I'm going to yaw to the left just a little bit. Oops, too much. Okay, right around there. Okay, tilting it to the right, slightly forward, leveling it off and tilting it forward. Look at that. Yeah. Like I used to say, impress your friends and your family and fly your quadcopter with the tilting action of your phone. And in my case, it'll be an iPad. I mean, it's so much easier to see what you're doing on an iPad instead of your phone. Everything is so small. So I prefer to use my iPad. And yes, I do take photos with my iPad. I'm one of those kind of guys. <laughs> okay, so the tilting action, the gyro mode works really great. Let me get out of the gyro mode and redirect it because there's a little breeze kicking the quadcopter this way. The breeze is coming from that direction. So yeah, that's the way the quadcopter is kind of drifting away. Let's see if I can do a flip. Ha 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 ha. I can do a flip with the phone app. Whoa, 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 whoa. And it goes back up in altitude. Forward flip. Goes down and goes back up. And back flip. Ha ha ha. Yep. This is pretty good. You can do all the stuff that you can with a hard remote with the phone app by itself. Let's see. Flight path. This is where you draw something. Okay, drawing a line forward. And it is going forward. Draw a line backwards. Comes backwards. And lasts for a little bit. So you can continue to draw the line. And it will continue going forward. You got to draw lines after one another. If you want to continue flying forward. And draw a line backwards continuously to bring it back. And it's coming back faster because the breeze is kind of coming this way. Alright, so let me draw a big circle and see if it flies in a circle. Oh yeah, look at that. Flies in a circle. And it's got enough power to stay in the same altitude. So that's great. Sometimes quadcopters don't have enough power. And they'll come down in altitude while they're doing the circle thing. So there you go, guys. I think that's just about it and this has reverse 3d and I'm not sure what that back and forth is gyroscope and all that you can calibrate and all that kind of stuff on there so let me get out of the flight pad so I can control it with the virtual sticks and I would say that is about it for this quadcopter guys the Neheme NH760, the Tracker Drone, a foldable entry-level beginner Wi-Fi FPV brushed motor quadcopter. So if you want to check it out for yourself or you are too better, too good for this kind of quadcopter, then Maybe perhaps you want to get one of these for somebody in your family or your friends to get them started in the great hobby of ours. Yep. Ooh, temperature iPad needs to cool down. Blah. Okay. And the quad cutter is coming down. It is very hot here. And I turned on my remote controller up and down on the throttle. And do I have control? No, I do not have control. Yeah. Nope, nothing. All right, hopefully, hopefully everything is recorded. I am thinking, and it is an emergency. Oh man, hopefully everything is recorded. Alright guys, so I just got done cooling off my iPad in the car with the air conditioning and all of the recording got saved. So, hallelujah. So, that'll conclude this video of the Neheme NH760, the Tracker Drone. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again 
next time.